I've done a couple of movies for the LinkedIn Learning Library, formerly known as lynda.com, teaching you how to animate with Adobe Photoshop using Photoshop's timeline feature, which isn't widely known about. A lot of people don't even know it's there. You can draw in Photoshop, you can animate in Photoshop. The process does involve some you know, uh, tricks, uh, but it's quite doable. Now, there is another program that will do pretty much the same thing. That program has a few advantages. Uh, primarily, it's free. Uh, it's called Krita. It's open source, and you can get it to work on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and a bunch of other operating systems. So what I'm going to do in this movie is compare Photoshop with Krita, see the pros and cons, if there are any, and show you the process of doing the same scene in each. So let's get started. So this is the Photoshop workspace. This is an older version, CS6, but they all look pretty much the same at this point. Uh, let's go to Window, Timeline, and this is where you will see the uh, timeline. Let me just resize this. And down at the bottom of the screen, if wherever you might see it, it could be at the top, we hit Create Frame Animation. We don't want a video timeline. We want a frame animation. So what I'm already going to quickly show you is the process of doing a, the simplest possible scene that I think we can get away with. So we'll make a folder and start with one drawing. We'll call this folder ball. And the first frame will be one. And I'm going to pick a black brush and just pick one of my kind of sketchy brushes. Draw a ball. I'm not going to try to make this special or in any way make it look artistic. This is just proof of concept. So that's number one. And since the metaphor here or the uh, analog is hand-drawn animation, we'll treat it like such. So this is going to be a very simple uh, slow in to uh, another frame, number five. So let's make another layer, call it five. And I'll, let's put the lower layer on an opacity like a light table. And number five will be over here. It's not going to do anything tremendously exciting. And we'll call that five. Now to see these animate, we need to make another exposure here on the timeline. So right now we have just an exposure for the first drawing. We'll keep that uh, at maximum opacity and I'll make a new exposure. And on this one, I will expose number five. And now when I toggle between them, we have an animation. I have set the custom keyboard shortcuts using the F1 and F2 keys uh, so that I can toggle from frame to frame. So when you see me do this, those are my custom F1 and F2. I, I didn't need the default F1 and F2, so they're easy to, uh, to reassign. So the next thing we want to do is a timing chart. So let's do, we'll do a one third favor for number three, that's our breakdown. And then we'll just do a number four here and a number two there. So let's do number three. We have to make a new layer here, call it number three. And we need to make a new exposure for that on the timeline here. So we click on this icon, make a new exposure. And now I need to make a virtual uh, light table. So I just pick the two extremes take their opacity down to about 30, and then we work on number three. Now this is going to be a one third favor, so it's going to be closer to the final one. And we title it three. The underline means we're signifying this as a breakdown drawing and, and not just as a regular in between. So we know it's important. So again, let's go back and fix our exposure. So it's one, then three, then five. So when I play one, three, five. And the other thing to do here is with this arrow, we can set the seconds that these will play for as one tenth of a second would be just fairly basic. There we go. A few other little bits of housekeeping. I like to color code these so that gray are keys and breakdowns are red. And we can just leave the in-betweens as no color. And uh, you could also subdivide with new color codes if you want them, but this is clean enough for me. Now I'm going to do the in-betweens and that'll be number two. And on number two again, I want to make a virtual light table. And that's more like a regular. And here's like a shift and trace trick that I can, I can use. Let's go to just draw over the first one. This is awful, but it's just enough to give you the idea. And then I can just drag that to here. So it's sort of, sort of a shift and trace approach as well. So sometimes you can do cheats like that as well. So let's switch off the light table. One, oh, 
two, three, five. So we need to add another exposure and add four. And that's our last in between. So once again, I want to make our light table and draw four in here. This time I won't cheat, I'll just go and draw it. And again, number it, four, and I think I forgot to number number two. So again, one, two, three, and this should be four, five. So now if I hit the play button, we have that. So this will be uh, the line layer. So this is just the, the line animation. There's no, I see when I, a uh, little glitch, I don't know if your version of Photoshop does this. When I renamed the folder, it erased all of my colors. Let me just restore them. That's very annoying. Thank you, Adobe. So let's make a new folder and this one will be the colors. And I'm just gonna make a bunch of layers here. One, two, three, four, five, and switch off all of these. Just the first one, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. I'm going to switch off the background layer. Now the background layer, I don't want to have to switch it off on every single exposure. So one little trick to do is double click on that. So just to make it a regular layer. And now when I switch this off on frame one, it gets switched off the entire run through the uh, the timeline. So this enables you to switch layers on and off. This is a, a way that we can emulate different layers in the timeline. So as you can see, we only have one layer here, but we have a virtual timeline by nesting our different uh, layers in groups, in folders in Photoshop. So again, it's a workaround. So I'm going to just pick white and pick a hard brush, make it bigger. I'm not going to try to make it too clean. Let's just race through it. Now I do recommend if you start messing around and you haven't done this before, don't be too, don't be too picky. You just want to wrap your head around the process of animating in this, uh, in this way. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. Let me play it again. Not too bad. So let's say we want to change the color uh, of this ball. There's different ways we can do it. And I'm not gonna go too deep into it right now, but one very quick way of doing it would be to right click on this layer, hit blending option, hit color overlay, pick a nice color and you're good to go. We can do that for each layer individually if we start splitting this up into different layers. But there is a really quick way we can do it if we have a simple folder like this. Right click on the folder, go blending options, color overlay, and I'm gonna pick say blue. And notice that it, don't, it only assigns, assigns it to the first in the sequence. All we have to do is go to the folder and switch it off and on, and it maps it all the way through. So you can make a change to the entire sequence just by making one change to the folder. So I don't like this blue, it's ugly. So let's go and just make a more neutral, desaturated green, click OK, OK, put the background back on. Again, on the first frame, not the second, that way it switches on for the entire run. And let's say we want to make this cycle. I don't wanna to have to animate it backwards, so let's click on this exposure here, hold down Alt and drag, option on the Mac, this one here too, and this one here as well. And now we have a cycle and I'm just gonna put one at the, at the end as well, just so it, it moves cleanly. And we can set this to play forever. That's the process of animating in Photoshop. It's basically that simple and you can take this as far as you like. You can do full Disney quality animation with this if you like. It just means there's gonna be a lot of layers in your folders panel. So let's go into Krita and I'll show you the same process here. Now, this isn't going to be a huge nuts and bolts Krita tutorial. Again, it's the same process in Krita, so you can compare it and see the difference. So you'll notice a very similar looking program. Of course, things are a little bit off if you're used to Photoshop, but all the same tools mostly are still here. So we have our layers panel over here. We're missing a timeline. Where is it? We go into, I think it's under uh, tools or settings. It's under settings, dockers and there's an animation timeline. We click on that, bingo. Now we have our animation timeline back. And we have our paint layer, so let's call this one ball line. And one big difference is going to emerge right now. So let's just pick a brush tool. So I'm going to do the same thing, uh, number one, and 
Don't forget to circle it top right. Timing chart will be identical to the one we did in Photoshop. That's it. Now, one huge difference emerges here between Krita and Photoshop. Krita does not require us to generate a huge stack of layers. Each layer comes with its own potential timeline. To activate that, we click on Add Blank Frame, and you see a line appears here. This is now exposing that first drawing for as long as we like. And let's move to the second exposure, and we're going to start drawing, and it'll begin to create a new exposure on that same timeline. So this is more like a proper animation timeline. And if you're lost already, we click this little light bulb here. That gives us an onion, uh, a light table or an onion skin. And, and now we can draw number five. And you know, if this is the final frame, sometimes you draw end. So we know that's the last drawing in the scene. So the next thing we need to do is to do drawing number three. I'm gonna just click on this and drag it. And then we have a new exposure will appear here. So if I start drawing, this will be number three. And as you can see, there's a, this is a much more uh, fluid process than in Photoshop. You can, you can just draw. You can just basically focus on the drawing and less on this layer management business. So let's keep going. And you can see how quickly now this is coming together. I'm going to do it in the space here for number two. And we'll make a gap here and drop in number four. And I think that's here. All right. And the other thing we need to realize too, this timeline is really long. So if I click on this little widget here, I can tell it to just be say 10 frames long. And now we can see we've stopped the slug about here. And I want now to create that switch off the uh, onion and see if we can play it. Yep. And it's playing a bit faster than Photoshop. Photoshop doesn't really play at exactly the right frame rate. You've got to export an MP4 to see the real frame rate. Um, but Credit does a much better job of hitting that frame rate. So let's make a new layer for the color. Click on this plus, new paint layer, and this will be called ball color. And I think I can switch off the background layer easy enough and go into the ball color select a white and we want the large color here and same process that we just did in photoshop and i'll just go through it frame by frame something weird happened there so i think i need to activate the the empty keyframe here I, I, but I, I only have to do that once and i think now it will let me whoops stop 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 uh, i think now as i draw yes it, now when i draw i can just continue to Move forward and draw, move forward and draw. There we go. So the other thing that we did in Photoshop was we added a color. Can we do the same thing here? So we go to the ball color layer, right click and go layer styles, color overlay, multiply. You don't want multiply, you want normal. Make the opacity 100% and just pick a nice color. I'll pick this default green that's here and then click OK. And that applies that color to the entire timeline on that layer. So we can color characters very much the same way that we color them in Photoshop, but it's it's really easier. And we can also color code these layers. There's a lot of stuff that we can still do. So the other thing that I did in Photoshop was I color coded the keys as gray and I color coded the uh, breakdowns as red. Let's do that too. So here we can go right click on the exposure and select from all these colors. Red for the breakdown, red for the breakdown, gray for the key. You might think, why bother? Uh, you know, there's only five drawings. If you're working on a scene that's got a hundred drawings or frames or 200 or 300, and you've got seven keys, it's important to be able to differentiate them on the timeline. It really helps you to not get lost. If there's a particular one you're working on, you can color it orange and go, right, that's the one I'm focusing on right now or one that I need to redo or whatever. So anyway. Uh, enough jabber and let's see about completing the cycle so i want to copy these two and hold down alt and see if they will copy over and i've been playing with this it's a little bit glitchy so sometimes it's easiest just to grab the upper layer and then the lower layer and now we have them both but it is possible to get to select them both let's see if i can do it yep and same thing here and go back to one. So we complete the cycle. 
Okay, got the first one there. Okay, so let's make sure that worked. I'll go through frame by frame. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse, four, three, two, one. And I forgot to draw number four on this. So this is very cool actually, because I can show you that when I draw, whoops, uh, I'm making sure I'm drawing on the right layer. The ball line layer is the one with the uh, numbers on it. That'll be four. Oh, and I need to make sure, this is funny. Uh, I keep drawing on the wrong layer because you need to access it here. It needs to be active on this one too. So there we go, four. And that four will now be on the second exposure. Any change that you make to one will be copied onto the other. It's basically a clone. So that means you're not doubling the drawing, you're cloning it, which is excellent. So let's go back and forward. And I think we should probably put the background back on too. That's it. So let me stop that. So essentially, that's the process of animating in Photoshop compared to the process of animating in Krita. Krita also has a huge advantage in that you can bring in audio. I haven't done this yet. I'm going to do that in a future movie. That'll be fun to play with to see if there's any glitches. But even being able to do even basic audio inside this means if you have a dialogue scene, you're going to be able to do lip syncing and do an acting scene, which I can't wait to do. So again, Krita is free. It's got fantastic brushes. Uh, it, it's a much easier setup than Photoshop. I'm not saying don't use Photoshop. If you are married to a particular Photoshop brush, it might be difficult for you to break away from it. Some of my brushes I brought into Krita, they sort of work. They're okay and I like them, but they're not exactly the same. There's a little gap there between what I would like them to be. I'm gonna to continue to work on that to see if I can get them closer. But essentially, you have at your disposal, if you're an animation student or you want to get back into animation and you don't want to mess with CGI, you've got the capacity with this program to do a full traditional classical animated scene without paying a penny. And it does not matter what operating system you're working on, chances are you're going to have a port of credit that you can apply to your computer. And, and not have to pay a, a cloud fee every month. I will do more movies that are explaining how to animate in Krita, but not just like a nuts and bolts, there's loads of them already, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the process of how do you do a traditional scene? So how do you do like a, a full Disney style, Don Bluth style animation uh, without getting lost in the weeds? So how do you stay in control of the scene? Anyway, uh, if you want to follow along with that and see more like this, then hit subscribe so you don't get uh, lost in the void that is the YouTube wilderness. Um, that's about it. Um, Tux says goodbye. He's the Linux penguin. And uh, I also have an old computer. I'll be showing some future courses in that too. It's a 15 year old banged up laptop and I have Krita on that as well. So I'm gonna do some scenes on here and bring them over onto that. So even the hardware, you can probably pick up like a banged up old computer, slam Linux on it get credit on it, get animating. Uh, if you get any old, my Wacom tablet was even connected to this uh, amazingly enough and that works really well. So that's about it. Uh, I'll let you go and uh, hopefully you want to watch more of these in the future. Bye.